welcome back to Thursday's Art Time Live for Kids. Today we're going to be diving deep into the ocean and we're going to be swimming with some stingrays today. So I hope you brought a black marker and some crayons or some markers, whatever you want to use to color your stingray. And I'm going to show you just an example. This is the little one that I did. And so we're going to be drawing our stingrays swimming along and we're also going to be drawing that one when you go to the aquarium and they press themselves up against the glass. So we're going to be drawing a couple different types. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning how to make a kelp forest so that it actually kind of looks like it's moving and swaying under the ocean. So as you're joining me, please let me know who you are, where you're listening in from. And again, my name is Julie and we're going to be, we're going to be drawing stingrays today. Hello, Chase. How are you doing today? Thanks for coming back. So um, next week, and I usually give you kind of a sneak peek, we're going to be going back underwater. We're going to be doing an octopus. And then we're going to be drawing this adorable little guy. He's from a game called Trash Pandas. Hi, Archana. Hello, Ella and Lucas. Thanks for popping on and joining me today. And again, we're going to be doing stingrays today. And as always, if all you have are crayons at home, then guess what? you're still going to be able to create. So it's my job to make sure that when you come on and you join me for art time, that if all you have are crayons, then you can create. If you have markers, that's great. If you have watercolors and you want to use watercolors, then that is awesome too. So is it Rohini and Avani? I'm going to get the pronunciation right. So hello, how are you? Hi, Mara. Thanks for coming on and joining me for stingray time. So my girls have been drawing stingrays all morning and they kind of made me a little aquarium full of baby stingrays. They had so much fun. Stingrays holding hands, stingrays back and forth, green stingrays, stingrays riding waves. So when you're done drawing your stingrays, you might decide that you want to create your own little stingray aquarium too. And they put them all in this little tiny box for me. So I just have a ton of little baby stingrays. So again, all you need today is I'm going to just be using a black marker and crayons myself. And this is what we're going to be creating. So we're going to start with this guy in the bottom corner here. The one that presses himself up against the glass and surprises you if you ever go to an aquarium and you see stingrays. And then we're going to draw these stingrays that are swimming by. And then we're going to finish by drawing this kelp forest. Hello, Anna. Thanks for coming. We're going to draw this kelp forest, but we're going to learn how to make these leaves look like they're actually moving in the water. So instead of drawing them like they're just like a tree leaf, we're going to draw them a little bit different. So I cannot wait. <laughs> Tyrion, I. I, you are always welcome to come back. I can't wait to see what you create, even if it's not this second and you come back on another day when you're feeling more like, like drawing. That, you know, sometimes it's just not the right time. But all of these videos stay right here. So if you want to come back and draw them at any time, you want to do them over again or you want to share them, they're they're all housed right here on this site. So if you missed one from before that you really, really wanted to do, they're still here. Hi, AJ. I'm so glad you're here. So again, next week, we're going to be going back under the sea again with an octopus. And then we're going to draw this little raccoon in this garbage can from a, um, a game called Trash Pandas. So we're going to have fun with, fun with that. But today we're doing stingrays. So I'm going to get out my marker and I'm using a bigger piece of paper here just so you guys can see a little bit better. But you'll notice that my piece of paper is lying down. So today, instead of standing up, it's decided to take a rest and it's lying down just like that. So I'm going to get out my marker and I'm going to get ready to get started. So I'm going to find the middle of my paper first, which is right about there. And my stingray is actually going to be in the bottom corner. So I'm going to come down towards one of the corners. And I'm going to start out by drawing a skinny U. And if your U is a little bit bigger or smaller than mine, then that's okay. But we're going to start all of our stingrays with the letter U. And when we draw, it's important to know how to break our, what we're drawing into shapes and it makes it a lot easier. So on my U, I'm going to go to one side of my U and I'm going to 
do a little curve so it comes with a little rounded point. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, just like that. So those are those two kind of knobby things that a stingray has on the front of its, on the front of its head. And then I'm gonna to come to the bottom of where I stopped and I'm gonna draw a curve line that's gonna go wing off to the side. So watch me first. It's gonna curve and it's gonna go wing. You should probably do the wing sound too as you're doing it. It makes it a little bit more fun. So that is his big wing. And I'm gonna do that same wing on the other side. I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna come back up with a wing. Now this one, he's pressed up against the glass of an aquarium. So this line is just gonna come straight down and it's gonna come right off the paper. Same thing with this. It's gonna curve around and it's gonna come right off the paper. So this one's gonna be a little bit different than the other stingrays we are doing but it's gonna have the same eyes. So his eyes are on the outside of those stalks. So not on the inside part of the U, but they're on this outside. So you're gonna take your black marker and draw an oval and you're gonna color it in. And that's gonna be one of his eyes. And you're gonna color it right over that line that you just drew. So whether or not you're using crayons or markers, you're gonna draw it right over the line. Then you're gonna hop over, so not here on the U, but pass the U to the other side and you're gonna draw his other eye. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to an aquarium, but when they press themselves up against the glass, their mouth is on the bottom part. And so when they come on the glass, suddenly you'll see their two little nostrils, so two little, two little lines for his nostrils. And then you'll see, you'll see him smiling at you. It's always kind of surprising to me when I see that. And then the other thing you'll see are these gills that go around his smile. So we're gonna draw those by making a bunch of short little lines right, right around his smile. So little tiny short lines all the way around. Just like that. And then we're just gonna leave him there and we're gonna come back and color him in later. So he's the one who's pressed up against the glass. So now in order to make drawing the rest of our stingrays a little easier, we're gonna take our paper and we're gonna turn it. So instead of our paper lying down, we're gonna stand it up now. And I bet you you notice, no matter how big or how small you drew your stingray, you're gonna have all this space. So this is the space we're going to use to put our stingrays. So for this one, you can see that I was able to fit two in. And for this one, I did the same, but they're in different locations. Do you see how they're not right next to each other? So your stingrays might be in a different location than mine, and that's okay. Hi, Maya and Anna, thanks for coming back. So I'm gonna pick a space. So here's his head. I'm gonna come right to the right and I'm gonna go up just a little bit. And that's where I'm gonna start my next one. And I bet you, you remember the shape. It's a U. And we're gonna start all of our stingrays with that U. And we're gonna draw it very similar to how we drew him, but we are gonna need to give him a tail. So again, we did the U. We're gonna come around and give him the skinny knob on his head. And on the other side, come around and give him that skinny knob on his head. And again, we're gonna go wing and we're gonna wing his, his, um, his flippers or his big wings out. So we're gonna come out and wing and yours might go off the paper. And if that happens, that's okay too. And we're gonna come to the other side and we're gonna do a curved line that kind of comes up, wing. So that's the start of his wings. Now with this guy down here, we just drew these lines straight off the paper. If I drew that line straight off the paper, this might be the longest, tallest stingray you've ever seen in your life. So we wanna be able to give him a tail. So we don't want this line to go all the way off. We want it to end right around here so we can see his tail. So watch me first. You're gonna come around in the same way and you're gonna stop. And then with that other line, you're gonna come around and instead of going all the way down, you're just gonna stop. 
right around at the same point. And these lines go inward. Now, if your lines went straight down, you might end up with a fatter wing stingray. And that's okay too. There's lots of different stingrays, aren't there? So these lines came in and right before we do the tail, I'm gonna draw a short line going in, a short line going in, and this is where the tail is gonna be. So I'm gonna pick one side, do a line straight down. Now stingrays have a really, really pointy tail. So I'm gonna come back up here and I'm gonna make sure that this tail ends in a point. So I'm gonna join those lines together. So there's my big stingray. Now he's gonna need his eyes. And again, they're not gonna go on the inside of that U. They go on the outside here. So I'm gonna draw this circle right on top of this line and color it in. And I'm gonna go on the other side and draw this circle and color it in. Now his mouth, we're not going to see this time because this stingray is swimming by and the mouth's underneath him. So we wouldn't see his mouth. We would just see his eyes. But stingrays also have, they have kind of a ridge on top of their body. So we're gonna draw that next for all of our stingrays that are swimming. We're on the side of the eye. We're gonna go just a little bit to the side and draw a line straight down. On the other side, straight down. Then we're gonna do two short lines that go inward. One, two and then another little tiny short line. And that's just making it look like when you color it that it has that ridge right on the edge there. So that is one of our stingrays. Now, if you still have room, then we're gonna draw another stingray. So I have all this room up here. We're gonna draw it exactly how we drew this one. And we're gonna pick a space. So pick a space wherever you have space on your piece of paper. Now, you might have space here. You might not have space here. So I want you to pick the space where you see the most white. That's where we're gonna fill it up. So I'm gonna do my U right here. And I'm gonna start again with that U shape. And once again, I'm gonna come over the top and give him that skinny knob and a skinny knob on the other side. Once again, I'm gonna do those two wings that come out with that curved line. So here's the one, it goes wing. And over here, I'm gonna do this one, it's gonna come down and then it's gonna come up and wing. And that one went right off the paper. Now you might notice that I might run into the stingray. So we'll see how we handle that. So this wing's gonna come around, if you remember, and it needs to come around and then this line is gonna to need to stop so we can add its tail. So watch me first, it's gonna go up, it's gonna come back down, and it's gonna come in, and then it's just going to, uh-oh, I'm gonna run into the stingray. My line's gonna run into the wing, and it's just gonna stop right there. So part of this stingray is actually behind this stingray. So my line will just stop. I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing. Now my point, if I had kept drawing off the edge, my point would have come around here. Now you don't see this. So my line's gonna come in right here and it's gonna come towards the center and it's going to just stop, just like that. Once again, I'm going to do the two short lines that go towards the tail. So this comes in, this comes in, and then I'm gonna draw his tail. And remember, the tails are really, really pointy. So this line's gonna come to a point and then I'm gonna come back up here and make that pointy tail. Now, one of the fun things that we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that one of our stingrays has already, already swam by and all we can see is the tail. So right up here, we're not gonna draw, oh, I forgot the eyes, goodness. Let's go back and do the eyes. So not on the inside of the U, but on the outside of these lines, we're gonna draw those eyes. I bet you, I bet you all of you watching already did the eyes. Put those eyes there, and then we're gonna draw this shape. So two lines straight down on the side of the eye. One, two. Two lines that are gonna go inward towards the middle of the, the um, stingray. 
one, two, and then two short lines straight down again. One, two. Okay, now that we finished that thing, right? Now we can go back to the other tail. So I have some space here and I want it to look like another one swam by and all I see is the tip of its tail. So I'm going to draw a line straight down from the edge of my page and another line straight down from the edge of my page. I'm going to make them go inward and I'm going to pretend that the stingray is actually way up here, it already swam by. So all I'm going to draw this time is just the tail. So a line coming down into that point and then up here and it's going to join it. So now I have two full stingrays swimming by. I have this stingray and I have this one that's just kind of popped itself up against the glass. Now, if you still have room on your paper, you might want to add another stingray. So I don't have a lot of room left, but if you do, keep adding stingrays, as many as you want. And if you ran out of room and you only were able to draw two of them, that's okay too. Sometimes I can draw the same thing and I might end up with three stingrays one time and four the next. So you're going to now take your paper and you're gonna turn it back. So now you can see that you have, here's the one that's pressed up against the glass. Here's the stingrays that are swimming by. And now we're gonna add our kelp forest. And I'm gonna get out another piece of paper and show you how we're going to do our kelp. So if you've ever drawn a tree with leaves, when we draw our kelp, we're gonna draw a line going up. Now, if I drew leaves like this, it doesn't look like they're moving, does it? And this is how we normally draw plants. But we want it to look like these plants and this kelp is like swaying, right? The, sea, uh, the stingrays are swimming by, the water current's going, and this kelp is just kind of swaying in the water. So instead of doing this, when we do our line going up, instead of a straight line, we're gonna draw a curvy line, a wiggly line. As wiggly of a line as you want, and then we're gonna do a wiggly line back. Wiggle and it doesn't have to match. And again, when we do the other side, wiggly line, and we're gonna do a wiggly line back. And even if your wiggly lines touch, it looks like, it looks like the kelp is actually moving in the water. So doing different types of lines is one way that you can make it look like your piece of art has movement in it. And that's an element of art. So that movement is really, really important. Now the paper isn't actually moving at all, is it? But it looks like this is moving and it looks like this is staying exactly still. So we're gonna add a kelp forest to our stingray. And depending on where you drew your stingrays is where you're gonna start. You're gonna add about three of them, maybe four. You're welcome to add more than that if you want, depending on where you have room but I don't want to put a piece of kelp going through this one. So I'm going to start right here. At the bottom, I'm going to draw a line. Every time I run into something, I'm going to stop, use my finger, come out, keep going up. Uh-oh, I ran into the tail. I'm going to use my finger, keep going up, 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 up. Uh-oh, ran into the stingray again. I'm going to use my finger, and I want there to be a top piece of kelp. And kelp is a type of seaweed. So right at the top, I'm gonna to do a wiggly line and then it's gonna come right back like a leaf. And instead of this being a single line, it's gonna be a skinny line. So anywhere that you drew a line, you're gonna make a really skinny line next to it. That's gonna go all the way down. Don't wanna run into the stingray. Gonna go on the other side come all the way down. So there's one piece, one of those leaves, and now, do you see how you have space that's not stingray? That's where you're going to draw those wiggly lines. So this line is gonna come out in a wiggly line, and again, wiggly line back. I'm gonna draw one on this side, and then I'm gonna switch and draw my next leaf on the other side. 
wiggly line out, wiggly line back. And you can see they look completely different, but you can also see how it looks like they're actually moving in the water. I'm gonna do another one right over here over this stingray's head. Wiggly line out and wiggly line back. And then I'm gonna draw one on the other side. Wiggly line out, wiggly line back. So we're gonna draw a couple more of this kelp and you can decide to draw one over here. You might wanna draw some more over here. I have a lot of room right here. And so I'm gonna draw one here. Now you can see it's gonna go right through the stingray. So I'm gonna start at the bottom. It's gonna go up. It's gonna stop at the stingray. I'm gonna use my finger to go through the stingray. It's gonna come out here. Uh-oh, it's gonna run into this one again. Use my finger. Keep going. Use my finger. And right before I get to the top, I'm gonna to draw a big leaf, just like that. The next thing you do is you're gonna make that skinny line next to any lines you just drew. So I drew a line up here. I drew a line here. I drew a line here. And I drew a line down here. So now we're gonna add those wiggly lines wherever we have room. So I don't have any room to add a wiggly line here because this stingray's in my way. So my leaf is gonna go this way instead. Wiggly line out, wiggly line in. And again, I don't have a lot of room, but you could, if you want, add a wiggly line that stops at the stingray and the stingray's in front of it, and then wiggly line back in. And I'm gonna add one more leaf here because I have a lot of white space. Wiggly line out, wiggly line in. And I'm gonna draw, I think, one more piece of kelp. And I can kind of choose a side. Maybe I'll do this one coming out from above this sting right here that's pressed up against the glass. So I can't start at the bottom for him. I have to pretend that I'm starting at the bottom and use my finger instead, come up, and my line would start right here. It's going to come all the way up. And remember, I'm gonna want a leaf at the top so right before I get to the top, I'm gonna to draw a big leaf. And I didn't draw any lines down here. So this is the only line I'm gonna draw, a skinny line next to it right here. And then this one's gonna get a couple of wiggly lines for those leaves that are blowing in the, um, not blowing, but they're moving with the current. So wiggly line out, wiggly line in. And I drew one over here, so I'd like to draw one over here. Wiggly line out, wiggly line in, and maybe one more. Maybe one, if this stingray is in front of this kelp, maybe there'd be a leaf and I'd see the little tail of it sticking out from the other side of the stingray. So I'm gonna bring this nice and close so you can see how that looks. You can see that leaf and it's just kind of popping out of that stingray. And you can see how the leaves, they really look like they're moving with that water. And once you've gotten all your kelp done, it's time to put your black marker or your black crayon away and to get out the colors. And then figure out what color are your stingrays going to be today. Now what I chose when I did my stingrays is I chose cool colors for the stingrays and mostly warm colors for the kelp. So cool colors are the colors of ice. So think those blues and purples and even some greens. And then your warm colors are your colors when you think of fire. So your reds and your oranges and your yellows. But the very first thing that you're gonna do for your stingrays, if you'd like, you can make a rainbow stingray if that's what you really want to do. But sometimes stingrays have these polka dots on their back, but they're not like big polka dots. They're spots and you just barely see them. Do you see how you can barely see these light blue spots on this stingray? So that's what I'm going to add to all of my stingrays. I'm going to choose a lighter color than whatever I'm going to color my stingray. So this stingray, I think I'm going to make him green. So I'm going to choose a really light green and I'm going to go and I'm going to give him 
really light polka dots. This might even be light, so light, this is kind of a yellowish green, that you might actually have a hard time even seeing it. But I'm going to make him look like he is just spotted. But again, if you decide that you don't want a spotted stingray, and you're already making a rainbow stingray, then you have to show me because I want to see a rainbow stingray. So now I'm going to get a darker green and I'm going to color over the top of those polka dots. So I'm not going to try to color around because that would be really hard and take me a long time. I'm just going to color right on top of them. And you know what you're going to see? You're going to see those little polka dots and they're just going to pop right out. So you don't have to worry about trying to color around these dots. That's one of the nice things about using crayons. Now if you decided to, to um, paint with watercolors, you could use your crayons to make polka dots too, and then use watercolors to go right over the top. Now I used bigger paper for mine, so it's going to take me quite a bit of time to color in these stingrays, I think. And you can see how he now looks like he's got all of those spots. And just remember, if I'm coloring faster than you, that is okay. You can take your time. In fact, I encourage you to take your time. So I have my big green one. Can you see his spots? I don't think you can see his spots very well. So I'll show you, just in case you don't believe me. Do you see how you can see his spots? And I didn't have to color around them. So I think the next thing, Ray, I'm going to color is this one right here. Now you can choose to color the one that is sticking up the glass a little bit different. Do you see how his belly is white? Now you don't have to color his belly white, but often when they press themselves up against the glass, their belly is a little bit of a different color. So you can choose to do that. You can use a color and instead of coloring his belly, just color around the edges. color his wings. In Archana, I'm really glad they're making the wing noise because these things are important. It's important to make the wing noise when you when you do your your stingray wings. It helps you get the whoosh, that motion. Sound effects are always good when doing art. So I'm going to take this color and color his face, but then I'm going to leave his belly white and I'm just going to go around the edges. There he is. I think I'm going to move to my other gigantic stingray. And I'm going to give this one pink spots. So a little bit, a little bit smaller than those giant polka dots. Just these little tiny dots. And I am really excited to see what colors your stingrays are. So now, again, I don't have to color around these dots. I'm just gonna use my purple and I'm just gonna color right over the top. And it might be hard for you to see, but I can definitely see these pink polka dots coming right through, even though I'm using a dark color. You might choose to make your heads a different color. 
you might be choosing to make your stingrays a little bit more realistic and you're making yours like a gray blue. Although I've seen a lot of stingray colors lately. I didn't realize they came in as many colors as they did. So that was kind of exciting to find out. Okay. Oh, I forgot I have one more stingray and he's kind of popping out of the edge here. I think I'm gonna make him green. That way my green stingray has a friend. And give him just a few polka dots on his tail. And then color him in just like that. So now I'm gonna to move to the kelp. And the only color I don't wanna make my kelp is blue because my ocean's gonna be blue. So if I make my kelp blue, then it's gonna blend in. So I decided that I wanted to use fire colors for my kelp. So I have um, yellow and orange and like a pinkish red. Apparently this is dark pink. So that's what we're gonna use. And I'm gonna make my kelp leaves different colors. And then don't forget that you're gonna to wanna to color in the stem of your, of your kelp. And you can choose whatever color you want for that. Now the reason I'm choosing to color the ocean last is because if I'm when I color blue, if I accidentally color into my stingray, you can see I'm not going to notice as much because when I colored with that green right over that light green, those spots, the green just went right over it. So that is going to make coloring a lot easier because depending on the size of paper you use, you might be doing a lot of coloring and your arm might be getting sore. I think I'm going to give my, my kelp a different color at the very, very top of each one. Let's see, maybe some pink over here. I think I'm almost done with my kelp and my stingrays. I'm almost ready to start it on my ocean. Okay, so I'm ready to start it on my ocean and I'm gonna pick a light blue, but you might choose a dark blue. You might even choose a different color ocean. And instead of pressing really hard and getting my hand really, really sore as I color the ocean, I'm going to press really, really lightly, almost like I'm just tickling the paper. And I'm going to start on one side and just go all the way up. And then I'm going to come back down again and I'm going to do another stripe and I'm going to go all the way up. Can make coloring a little bit faster if you do it this way, especially when you have a big background to do. Don't want to accidentally color in my stingray's belly. I wonder what you're coloring out there. Are you still coloring your stingrays? Are you working on your kelp? 
Or are you done with both and you're working on your ocean just like I am? Especially when you use big paper, this is a lot of ocean to color. So you might be coloring a long time too. It's a little bit hard sometimes to color when you're coloring on the wall than when it's right on the, on the table in front of you. So as I'm coloring, I would love to know if any of you have seen a stingray, whether it's in, the, it's in an aquarium or maybe you've seen one in the ocean. Maybe you've seen one, you know, when you took a boat ride once and you were lucky enough to see one in the water. And I'm almost getting to the end of my ocean, I think. And even my, even my hands sometimes can get a little tired. I got one more stripe of ocean to do. There we go. So I'm done with mine, but I bet you you're still working on yours. And if you are, I don't blame you because that can be a lot of coloring. So I'm really excited to see what you guys have done with yours and what color your stingrays are and what color your kelp forest is. And well, good, Jen, I'm glad you've seen them. I've never actually seen one in the wild. I've only seen them at the aquarium. And of course, I've gotten to pet them at the aquarium, which is kind of a lot of fun. And usually they come up just like this to say hello. So I'm going to go over again while you guys are finishing up what we're going to be doing next week. But we're going to go back into the ocean again. And we're going to do this octopus on Tuesday. So we're going to learn how to do his arms. And if you notice, he kind of looks like he's moving too, just like the kelp. And then on Thursday, we're going to come back and we're going to do this raccoon. And this raccoon is from a really fun game called Trash Pandas. So that's what we're going to be doing next week. And again, I have a list of things that I'm working on that you guys have told me that you love doing. Stingrays was one of them. So I hope that whoever had stingrays on their list for one of their favorite creatures, that you guys enjoyed this lesson. And again, please share your artwork with me. Post it um, when this video ends and when it's finally up and you're able to post videos, please share. It's one of my favorite things in the world to see what you guys have, have created. It just makes my day. Cannot tell you enough. But that's it for today's lesson. And wow, they got to feed them too, Archana? How lucky. I'm kind of jealous. I'm going to be honest. I think last year I was at a conference and my girls went and they got to pet um, stingrays for a while and I was really really kind of jealous so what the stingray shuffle see see AJ I'm jealous that you've gotten to see them at the aquarium probably more recently than I have too so um, anyway I hope you guys enjoy this so uh, let me know if there's more animals that are your favorites that you want to see I have quite a few on the list I'm still working on a mermaid and a unicorn for you guys and there's a couple of other ones on my list that I can't remember but I do have a list so if there's something you guys want to do make sure you put it in the, the comments below and again send me your artwork so hope you guys have a wonderful weekend but I will be back on Tuesday with the octopus and we'll 
make sure you guys keep me straight counting his arms because sometimes I lose track. So have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and thanks for joining me. Bye everyone.